EasyFluence version 2 allows arbitrary beam arrangements, so it's a general purpose 3D planning assistant. Now I'm going to demonstrate real quickly the whole brain. So when we run it on a whole brain, it's going to use the same optimizer it uses for nearly parallel pose plans such as breast, which has some, some nice rule-based approaches to, to getting a really nice uniform dose, uh, given that it's a parallel pose plan. And so when you uh, produce this output, you have the option, of course, it's going to produce your, your DVH for the PTV eval EZ structure that it automatically contours. And you then, of course, can generate a field and field. Now, when it generates a field and field, I wanted to demonstrate this real fast because this is a large field that has jaws bigger than the MLCs can move across the jaws. For Millennium MLCs, you can only move the MLC uh, 15 centimeters away from the, the most open MLC. So you can't close the, all the way across the jaws. And therefore, uh, you might end up in a scenario where you need to choose whether you want to allow movement or not. If we decide to lock the jaws, so you can see in the video on the administration application, you can actually set a default where it always allows jaw movement. Um, but if, if you select a prompt in the administration application, this window appears. So say you want to lock the jaws such that you can merge all your subfields. Now EasyFluence is going to run that field and field uh, optimization in a way that it will not allow the jaws to move and it will not allow carriage shifts. So here we are, we have our field and field. And you can see it has a snapshot where the jaws were moved. So you can actually compare what happens when you move the jaws, what happens when you don't move the jaws. It does a slight, slightly different dose distribution, but very similar in this case. So really there's no big benefit, but it is nice that it does both and you can compare them because you can easily determine whether moving the jaws really has any dosimetric impact. Now, uh, the subfields, of course, you can, you can review and see if you like what it's doing or not, and then export it to Eclipse. So that is the parallel opposed uh, two field, which EasyFluence since 1.4, version 1.4, could do this uh, and do it well. So now the new version of EasyFluence version two supports multiple different sites and as I said, arbitrary beam arrangements. So you'll see that the user interface is a little bit different when this happens. So you'll see initially when you run it on a plan that has an arbitrary beam arrangement, which means it's not nearly parallel opposed, you're going to have this field appear where you can decide to use the current field, relative field weights, in this case 0 0.6, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. I like those for a three field rectum, so I'm going to say that's what I want. You can also choose which fields you want to modulate. I highly recommend only modulating fields where you probably would have put a wedge or done a field and field on them. The reason is that, for example, this this beam coming in from the posterior side, there isn't a whole lot of modulation necessary from it. And so it only increases the complexity of the plan and the treatment if you add subfields to it. So you can uncheck that and apply. And we have our plan. So now we can, of course, select which plan, which curve you like. I'm just going to pick the one that has the most coverage. You can see that it has our relative field weights down here. It has this one as not modulated, this field right here. And then the 60%, 20%, 20% field weights are uh, here as well. When I go to the Beams Eye View tab, you can also see there's a Plan View and a Field Weights tab. We're going to get to those in a minute. But the Beams Eye View tab works as, as it does for the breast plans. Uh, you can see here my, my first field, the PA field, which is highlighted over here. Uh, this, feel, this view, you can, you can uh, use the mouse wheel to click and drag in order to move around. Very much like Eclipse, you can hold down control and zoom. And same with the beam's eye view, you can do the same thing. So uh, it's a nice way to, to, to check things uh, from a different, different area or whatever. And so as, this particular field is the PA field. You can see it has a, a, a uniform fluence, which is why it looks pink. So it doesn't have any any type of, of modulation. If I go to the next field, what does this look like? It looks like a wedge, right? Because you have a, a higher dose here on this side than on this side. And so that's almost exactly what it's doing is the optimizer sees that it needs more, more coverage in the structure back here where the percent depth dose of the PA field is not getting enough dose. And so EasyFluence automatically creates a, a wedge-like uh, fluence pattern. 
Now it's better than a wedge though, because a wedge would be the same intensity from top to bottom. But here you can see Easy Fluence has a, a differing intensity where it needs to in order to get better coverage. So if you like what, what is produced here, because currently it's an e-comp, as you can see in the Fluence snapshot, then you can then generate the field and field. You can also use the star button to tell how many segments you want per field. Obviously, this field is an open field that's only going to have one anyway, but the maximum number of segments only gives you the, the limit, not the uh, actual end result. It will only use as many subfields as it thinks is necessary. So I'm going to generate a field and field. And pretty quickly, we're going to have a field and field plan that delivers wedge-like uh, fluence pattern such that you have uh, a dose distribution. I'm going between now my e-comp and my field and field. You can see that it's practically identical dBH between the two. Very slight differences. And if I come down to my field and field, the effective fluence pattern of this field and field is very similar to my e-comp. Uh, and of course, it looks like a EDW, doesn't it? If I did want to um, go back to the field weights tab. So the plan view tab, by the way, is the same view that you normally get in EasyFluence. If you want to see the video on, on editing, this is the, the place that you can actually just edit dose directly. But uh, in any case, if you go to field weights, then you can, if you want, of course, adjust your relative field weights. Suppose, suppose we want less from the, the PA field, we can drag it. It gives you a preview of the dose, but you hit apply and it does the full fluence optimization. So now it has a little bit less of a wedge, it seems, for this field. And of course, we could, could modulate this beam as well if we wanted to, but you'll probably find that you see this, this fluence range right here, 0.628 to 0.696. It did modulate it, but it's not very modulated because it's only about a 10% modulation from the least the least dose or the least fluence intensity to the highest fluence intensity, which makes it a pretty good case for maybe not modulating at all. But if you do modulate it, of course, the DVH is going to be really, really nice anyway. So, so it's up to you. If you generate a field and field, it will, of course, generate subfields for that uh, the PA field as it can, given that you know small amount of modulation. We'll see how many it, it, it only generated three subfields for it, it seems. So in any case, it will it will work with what you give it. Um, but again, if you want to use it as your 3D planning assistant, then you know it, it makes a lot of sense to decide which fields it makes sense to modulate and just modulate those. Now for another example, I'm going to do a four field lung. So in this case, we have four fields coming from uh, these kind of oblique gantry angles. I want to use this field, this plan to demonstrate how the field weights work, the relative field weights. In this case, I'm going to not use the current relative field weights and it will automatically select field weights. It basically throws out the field weights that, that you had in Eclipse and it just automatically optimizes them to what it thinks make the most sense. So here we have our result. That uh, So you, these relative field weights were chosen by the optimizer. Now, suppose you have a structure you really don't want to get a lot of dose to and you want to limit the max dose to, like a spinal cord. So here, I can change the absolute, the dose view to absolute dose, and the max dose is 4,034. So that's not too bad, but suppose you wanted to control it even more. So you can find which field is going through it. So that's this uh, last field here. Say you wanted to give it less dose. You can see it updating on the fly to approximately 3,500. When I hit apply, it actually does the full fluence optimization. It doesn't take very long, generally. And after doing the full optimization, it's pretty close to what that, that estimated uh, change was going to be. It's 3,600. Of course, you can see now it, you have more dose coming in from this field. And so, you know, that might not be what you want, obviously. So it's very easy then, you know, to, to go back the other way, to try it out, see see what you think. Is, uh, is the best weighting across them. But every time you hit that apply button, it does this full fluence optimization to where you can then uh, see you know, what, what the optimal fluence delivery is going to produce in terms of the dose distribution. And the DVH, of course, is updated as well. So one thing to be, be aware of. So suppose that the structure that, a structure that you want to preserve is inside of the the uh, the PTV eval EZ structure, which means it's inside where all the fields overlap. Now, we uh, 
debated internally whether we should add essentially an OER optimizer. But because EasyFluence is a 3D planning assistant tool to get a homogeneous dose throughout a volume, you know, where all the fields overlap, uh, we did not include that because as soon as you start optimizing two particular structures, then you're, uh, as far as the billing guidelines go, you're entering the inverse planning with uh, IMRT type uh, type planning techniques, and therefore, you know, it becomes a question of can it be, uh, is it justifiably billable as IMRT? And so we we designed EasyFluence to be uh, not to ignore the structures in terms of trying to apply specific dosimetric objectives in the inverse planning process to various structures such that per the billing guidelines they are not considered it is not considered IMRT planning. Therefore you do need to think of this in terms of how do I get less dose to a structure. If that structure is inside of the volume the only way to, to get less dose to it would be to do some manual editing which you can see the manual editing video uh, but otherwise, EasyFluence is always trying to get 100% dose coverage to where all the fields converge, which means where the PTV eval EZ structure is. So back here in Eclipse, one more thing I can show you. EasyFluence does work with any number of beam angles and couch kicks and so forth. So this is a five field brain and with couch kicks. So EasyFluence will, of course, prompt you like it did before if you want to use the current field relative field weights or automatically select them so I leave it unchecked to automatically select it I'm going to have all fields modulated you could decide to only modulate two or three and you'd probably get a really good plan because uh, as long as they're they're ones that are good gantry angles to modulate from then easy fluence will use that modulation to fill in wherever the open fields weren't able to get coverage So as soon as this is done calculating, the more fields, it takes a little bit longer to, to do the, the calculation. But as you can see, I mean, this was real time, right? It uh, really didn't take that long, just uh, 30 seconds. Certainly a lot less time than manually trying to get a good 3D plan out of, uh, out of Eclipse. OK, so here, of course, we have some different curves. You can choose the one that you like the best. Perhaps this one maybe has the most coverage. And then it's just a matter of you know, doing your field and field if you want to do field and field and so forth. So that's EasyFluence, uh, the new features that support arbitrary beam angles.